School brings some kind of structure to your life and it can be comforting to outsource your calendar's planning to an institution who knows which knowledge is valuable in the market. The comfort allows you to stop worrying about life and focus on acquiring knowledge. At the end of that outsourcing though, you're expected to be an adult making adult decisions. Like which city you live in, which industry or company you'll apply to work at, and if you fail at getting a job, it's now on you to find a way to make it work. God forbid it's an area that doesn't interest you, you're stuck here for eight hours a day, and these are the most alert hours of your life. The mornings are spent in preparing to go to work and the evenings are often going to be some kind of change from the alert day. Good food, some working out, some friends and rest before you start all over again tomorrow. I was horrified by this idea of life. I mean, is that all we are going to look forward to in our lives, like for the rest of it? Where's the variety? Variety is the spice of life. Forget about the what ifs and let's explore the what nows of life after business school here in France. Whether you're a student in France or you're aspiring to move to France with or without school, this video can throw some light on one possibility. The one that I have been able to build for myself. I crossed the finish line of business school back in 2016 and I'm glad I spent so much time learning French and I'm glad that I chose this data industry. I've spoken all about that in my MIM series and this video is transitioning to the next part of the story. Leaving business school, I was filled with a lot of anxiety around this whole job situation in that I didn't have a job, but I did have a debt though and I wanted to find a way to pay this off. That was a time I stopped doing everything else in my life and focused on how I could get an interview and how I could nail it. I did a little bit of a job in the site to make some rent money. But apart from that, I was primarily focusing on this job thing. Having finished that journey now, I can tell you that if you prepared well, you don't have to give a dozen interviews. I had to give a handful of them before I found my first job. And I'm glad I started where I started and I'm enjoying my journey so far. I've spoken about my choice of the data industry, why did I pick this and how I prepared for it, which is kind of goes for any industry really, in this video right here. If you're interested, give that a look. That'll definitely get you up to speed to not do a dozen interviews but just pick the right companies and get in. Once it happened and I got into my first full-time job, I'm really grateful for all of these people who helped me out. I would love to have them on my channel sooner or later where they could impart a little bit of their wisdom. But a lot of it was just showing up and working and having people help you. The first year itself, apart from the job being like brand new, so you have to learn and work in the same work day, I lived in a sad house sharing far away from the city of Paris in the outskirts. So I had to travel all the way and come back. It was really not the, yeah, it was not the best time. I was not making that much money either to start with. I was sending off a big chunk of it to pay back my debt. So yeah, that year was, uh, it was challenging. I didn't have any friends yet and all that mattered, it was not fitness, was not cook healthy. It was just be as functional as possible to get food in your tummy and get to work. I didn't have time to invest in friends either with all the travel and all that good stuff. All that mattered back then was paying back the debt. Oh yeah, and not to get fired because that's possible when you're a consultant in France that your client says that they don't want to work with you anymore. So your consulting company is gonna be like, yo, we gave you a great client and you screwed it up. So that's a condition back in 2019, 2020. And this part is supposed to be hard. It is going to be hard no matter what, unless you have a silver spoon that somebody else gave you that you don't deserve. So it's gonna be hard, I knew that, so I bit my lip and got to work. Let's just pause for a second and fast forward to the summer of 2023. I find myself in Poland. It is summertime, it's beautifully sunny, and I find myself in the company of around 400 people who are the same weird as me. They all love languages so much that they spend hours learning languages. They helped me to get so close to these people and I have spent so much time talking to them and hearing about their language journeys, which has been inspiring to say the least. And I gave a talk about my beloved Urdu language too. It was so humbling to see Europeans. There was this Polish guy who spoke Hindi and he can read and write Hindi and he just learned it over here living in Poland. It was so, yeah, interesting to see that. I was invited to give another talk at another event, which is a sister event from the first one, in Budapest. And I went for that in October. Again, I had the time of my life and I met other people that I didn't get to meet in the first event. When I was in Budapest, I was really humbled by the fact that I get to hang with these people, I get to know these people and become friends with them. And breaking the ice was so much easier than before because I've been in France for a bit. I know a thing or two about solitude. And this was so much easier because there is this really strong common 
thing that links the two of us. One of the guys that I met at the conference, this guy Simon, he's from Canada and he was visiting Paris. So we, yeah, met up. We had a long conversation about life and we had Indian food in Paris before he had to fly back to Canada. And these kind of relationships and friendships just started popping up. So the reason I paused and fast forwarded to 2023 was to show that this kind of community access is also possible. When you're starting off, it may not seem like that. When you move to a new country for the first time or before you even have the courage to do it, you may ask yourself if it's going to be possible for you to find your community, to find your clique, to find your friends. And um, even I was kind of convinced that I won't, uh, especially after moving here. I was very optimistic before, but after moving to France, it was, it was hard. If you took snapshots of these events and meeting these people and looking at my WhatsApp chat today with these people and you sent it to the old Josh back in 2016 when I first moved to France, I would not have, I would really not believe that this is going to happen. I didn't foresee that I will have these rich experiences. And if you feel that way too, it means that you're working with a tight, difficult challenge, a formidable one. So that's good news. I remember this from the Superman movie. This Man of Steel was such a powerful guy just by being who he is. He goes in the center of this huge beam and then the beam explodes and whatever. The end of the story and uh, the hero wins. It doesn't feel formidable because he didn't have to struggle for it. He just showed up and he had to be and it worked out, you know? And I think that's a lot like life because if you didn't struggle or if you didn't feel like you couldn't do it, then it doesn't feel like a challenging triumphant victory at the end of it, you know? I'm here to testify that the European dream is still wide and awake where you can fit yourself into a certain trade to make enough resources that helps you to fit into a community because you need to pay rent to be able to be here. If you can't pay rent, then um, you can't be here. <laughs> Since I spent so many years in solitude here in France, apart from a few pockets like the farm experience I had, I have a thing or two to say about communities. There is certainly a trend to it and it doesn't have to be complicated if you observe why people stick to each other, which will be the topic of my video next week. So hit the bell to make sure you don't miss it when it comes up. I'm going to talk about specifically for an Indian here in Europe, how, how it's been to discover and find myself a community. In the meantime, you can check out this video where I'm talking about the struggles you'll face if you move to France in your late 20s. I did touch about the community thing because that's one of the struggles, but for the dedicated video where I'm just talking about that, hit the bell so that you're notified about it next week. If this video drove any value to you, consider hitting the thumbs up. It helps the channel. I'll see you guys next week. Keep learning